On this episode, we visit Binghamton, New York. We meet the public health director for Broome County. We learn about the state DOT's role in greenways. We learn about the city's role in greenways. Partnerships are key to the greenway system. And finally, we talk with a blind pedestrian about traffic. Stay tuned. We're in Binghamton, New York, talking with Claudia Edwards, who's public health director with the Broome County Health Department. Why would the public health department be interested in walking? Oh, many reasons, John. Um, physical activity is so important for preventing the onset of chronic disease and for maintaining um, or keeping chronic diseases from uh, developing further. It's also wonderful for maintaining health in general. And uh, it's a simple uh, behavior that we can adopt. It's simple to do. And places like the city of Binghamton have really um, expanded themselves and supported the enhancement of walkable areas for pedestrians and residents. As the health department, you know, you don't own the infrastructure. Uh, what do you have to do to make things happen? Well, we're really dependent upon our, uh, our very important partners in this initiative. Um, addressing public health issues really requires everyone in the community to participate, and everyone has a, speci a specific role. Um, the Binghamton Transportation Authority has really um, done a wonderful job with planning out walkable areas so that pedestrians feel comfortable with walking. You know, it's one thing to say you have to get out there and do physical activity, but if people don't feel comfortable doing this or if there aren't places to support this, it's not going to happen. So we need our partners to get together and each one play an important role in improving the health of the public. So who, who, who are all your partners? Uh, I mean, we want, you might miss a couple, but who are some of the major ones? Well, as I said, the Binghamton Transportation Authority, the New York State Department of Transportation. Now, typically public health and the state DOT, you wouldn't think that they hold hands together, but there's a definite uh, partnership there. They design environments, they plan environments, and in doing so, they need to keep the public health perspective involved with their planning and their approach, and they certainly have done that by, by assisting with creating beautiful walkable areas and parks by emphasizing the natural attributes of an area that make things conducive for people to want to get out and bike ride or skateboard or do whatever physical activity they desire. Other partners are our hospitals. Um, they have assisted with outreach programs. Um, they do primary care with our patients. They engage in health education and uh, case management for patients who have chronic diseases. Um, UHS has been involved with BC Walks, an initiative that reaches 10,000 people in Broome County. That's almost 5% of our population. Um, uh, the other hospital, Lord's Hospital, has a wonderfully developed diabetes program that um, really focuses on diabetes education and case management. So they're doing their share in the clinical area of chronic disease control and maintenance. We also involve our schools because our young people are impacted by health issues early on in life. We know that obesity is a problem that affects young children. And the obesity rates among children are the highest that historically that have ever existed. So this is what they call almost a pandemic um, or an epidemic that has to be addressed. And so we need our schools. Children are captive audiences in our schools for almost eight hours a day. We need to make sure that they eat healthy foods, that they build in physical activities during the day to encourage movement, um, to encourage healthy behaviors among children, um, and we need the support of parents in this because no public health problem really is isolated. It, it involves all ages, it involves all relationships, so we need partners to help this really move forward and have an impact. Um, some of the other players that we have involve the media. 
Uh, media is very important in getting our public health messages and our education pieces out there to the community. Um, other players involve the business world. Businesses are looking at implementing employee health programs that look at perhaps during break times, during lunch hour, after work, uh, physical activity programs, educational programs that focus on good health and healthy eating are built in to that, again, a captive audience in the employment world. So um, all of these players are very, very important. And then, of course, our elected officials. Our elected officials have the power and the authority to enact legislation to change policy. And we need policies that support good health. And some of those policies, such as the City of Binghamton, the Binghamton City Council has enacted, include no smoking in areas where children play. The Broome County Legislature also has enacted legislation that does not allow smoking around where children play in all of the Broome County parks. So our county uh, legislators, our elected officials, of course our state legislature, uh, Assemblyman uh, and Assemblywoman Lepardo and of course um, Tom Limbus, our senator, they have an integral part also in enacting support and legislation for programming, for assisting us with rolling out these initiatives, um, getting state funding to do this, and getting federal funding to do this as well. And you're, you're dealing with an awful lot of partners who might think, well, my business is, is moving cars, or my business is you know, teaching children to read, or, or my business is a business. Uh, what's it taken to, to draw them in to, so that they realize that, that they have a role in, in something like this? That's an interesting question. When we started our Steps to a Healthier New York program, we were surprised at how many people are interested in their own health and are ready to learn more and are ready to take charge of their own health. And the response, it was not difficult to engage partners. There's, there's a baseline realization that I can change my behavior, I can keep myself healthy. So there was a natural interest there, and I think that just cascaded down to the areas within their purview. So maybe I'm the one moving cars, but let me see how my job of moving cars can improve someone's health, if not my own. And those talks uh, were opened up, and it's just amazing how the, committees, the uh, community stepped forward and started to engage. It was not a difficult uh, climb at all. And several years from now, we look back. Uh, you know, evaluation is always important in, in, in public health. Uh, how do we know if we've been successful? Well, that's, a, that's also a good question. We have an obligation to evaluate our initiatives. In today's world, um, there, there's very little programming that will be supported without concrete evidence-based evaluation. And in public health, that's sort of a difficult task because we don't always have the tools to do um, complete and effective evaluation that will give us the whole picture. But what we do have at our fingertips is starting to paint a very interesting picture. So we may not know that an intervention is 100% successful, but it is contributing a piece to the puzzle of maintaining health and addressing um, this epidemic of obesity. And for that, it has value alone. Um, there's been a lot of people dedicating resources and money to researching the obesity epidemic, and I think Finally now, people have been at this for over 30 years, finally now they're coming out with some hard and fast recommendations, interventions that are successful, and education and training that needs to be done among our medical professionals. Um, you have cardiac specialists, you have diabetic specialists, you don't have obesity specialists. And now the schools of education are coming out with a certification of curriculum um, in 2010 for physicians who will receive a special certificate in uh, the area of obesity and how exactly to recommend 
um, interventions and how to treat it, how to treat it. So, so there's a lot that's been happening with this issue. So someone watching the program, they've been sitting on their couch a little too much. <clears throat> They're thinking, well, maybe I should go for a walk. What, the, what would you tell them? Absolutely. Walking is free. It is easy to do. It doesn't require a lot of equipment. It doesn't require training. It simply requires a little bit of time and enjoy your surroundings. Enjoy it. You can walk 12 months out of the year. And if you give yourself a chance to adjust to the temperature changes, you'll be fine. And it's probably one of the best activities you can do for your health and for your mental health as well. We're in Binghamton, New York, talking with Mark Bowers with the New York State DOT. What do you do for the Department of Transportation? Well, among, uh, among my duties, I'm the Regional Pedestrian and Bicycle Coordinator. And in that capacity for DOT, we have our own Bicycle Pedestrian Committee who act as the advocates for the inclusion of bicycle and pedestrian uh, facilities on all of the projects that come through state DOT, whether they're projects on our system, on the state system, projects that we're progressing, or whether they're projects with the uh, local municipalities, highway and bridge projects. So uh, what are some of the things you've been involved with here in Binghamton? Well, one of the biggest things and probably the most exciting, I thought we do, uh, uh, I think we do a very good job on a project by project basis. Uh, we get to review plans, we're involved in the scoping and the design of those projects. Um, but what's exciting here in Binghamton is uh, working with our local metropolitan planning organization, the Binghamton Metropolitan Transportation Study, to implement a study that they did back in 1999 to build a greenway in the Binghamton urban area. Um, the scope of that is a 30 plus mile network of interconnected bicycle and pedestrian facilities. It spans two counties, uh, Broome and Tioga, and involves about seven or eight different municipalities. So uh, that's one of the things that's been probably the most interesting part of uh, being the bicycle and pedestrian coordinator is uh, working with the MPO to sort of become the face of this because we get a lot of studies that can unfortunately end up on shelves no matter how well intended and to be able to take this and implement this uh, study and see the pieces like the piece we have here today where we're standing be built and see people out using them uh, it's been very rewarding and very exciting. And you have a, a lot of different jurisdictions involved uh, does that make it essential to have uh, coordination on the on the bigger scale when you have that many different jurisdictions involved? Uh, absolutely, it takes a lot of partnering. Um, and the, the method initially was uh, to have the individual municipalities go out and uh, look for funding to build their, uh, build their projects. Here in the Binghamton area and in New York State, uh, we're fortunate we've been able to take advantage of the Transportation Enhancement Program, which is a federal program, which is a set aside, which makes uh, uh, funding available for municipalities uh, to build bicycle and pedestrian facilities. And also here in New York State, the city of Binghamton has been a great partner for us. Um, they have a local waterfront revitalization program uh, which makes them eligible for money from the Department of State which is a 50-50 program. Uh, municipalities have to first instance the money, uh, put it all up front, but then they get reimbursed. With the federal program uh, they get reimbursed 80 percent and with the state programs they get 50 percent. So we've been able to work uh, cooperatively with the towns, uh, with the city, uh, with the county uh, to be able to get this network built out and it's been uh, it's been very exciting and uh, uh, we've been able to sort of get out of our stovepipes. We've been able to develop a lot of other interesting partnerships as well with the healthcare community, with the local business community, uh, with the arts community, looking at incorporating uh, sculpture and murals and things uh, on the Greenway as well to make it more of a destination. So it's been, uh, it takes a lot of coordination. Um, it takes a lot of time. Anytime you're using federal or state money, uh, we have to go through the full environmental projects, uh, pro process. Um, so it can take time. Sometimes people don't understand that, but uh, we've been able to make a lot of uh, progress in the last three years since we developed this partnership. Now, what's what's the role of the of the public in all this? Uh, you know, the where, where do they fit into this whole process? 
Well, I think the good thing is that um, uh, we've had a very uh, uh, strong influence from the public. It's really been the public that called for this. I know when Scott uh, Regal and I from BMTS picked this up, uh, his boss was hesitant about us moving forward with this, but they were in the process of updating their long-range plan. And they did a great job of engaging the public in public information meetings. Uh, they had charrettes that they did with the public. And out of the development of their long-range plans, one of the key elements was that people saw the completion of the Greater Binghamton Greenway uh, as a key element in any long-range plan they did. So um, people have been involved in the planning process and been advocates for it. But uh, another outgrowth, which I think is just as important, is um, people are now more engaged in their community. We have a group here along this section of the river called the Friends of the Flow. And periodically we come out, we do river cleanups, we do plantings. Uh, it's been a great way for the public to get engaged um, from a sense of being involved in your community and volunteerism um, to stay engaged with the community and get out and see other people. People walk, they see each other. So there's a strong aspect of knitting the community back together. Uh, we, have, we talk a lot about quality of life and what does that all mean, but I think we found over the last three or four years in the development of this Greenway that people um, really appreciate this. They are glad to get back out here in Binghamton with these pieces. We're able to get back to the river. Uh, you can see the flood walls here have kept people from the river uh, for a long time, and now uh, people are able to walk and, and get down and enjoy the river and uh, the foliage and aquatic life and the geese and all the rest of the stuff that's here. When you talk with the pedestrian and bicycle coordinators from the other regions, uh, are they seeing the same sort of interest in their regions in, in this type of facility and, and, and pedestrian facilities in general? Yeah, I think, I, I think you could really say that. And we're really beginning to start to knit a network together across New York State. I think all of the regions individually have great stuff going on in, in, a, in these difficult financial times. And with a huge infrastructure that we've created over time, uh, there's never enough money to do everything you want to do. But uh, there's a recognition within New York State and across New York State's divided into 11 DOT regions. Um, and we have in the larger urban areas, we have all the metropolitan planning organizations, but we get together. Uh, there's state bike routes now, signed state bike routes, whether it's Bike Route 17, Bike Route 5, Bike Route 9. We're beginning to knit the entire state together. Uh, our website's actually getting better, so it makes it easier for people from out of state to find out what's going on in New York State, and we're continuing to try and um, uh, update that website, make it more informative, and begin to tie all of the trails together. There's a lot of great hiking uh, in New York State. There's a lot of off-road sort of mountain biking going on, as well as these types of pedestrian facilities. So I think there's an acknowledgement both at the state through DOT and with the MPOs and a lot of the organizations that are out there, parks and everything, that we need to continue to work together to build out this entire network. We're talking with Caroline Kedor, who's a senior planner with the city of Binghamton. So what's the city's role been in the greenways and everything else that's going on here? The city's been a very active partner in the development of greenways throughout Binghamton, um, both as a an awardee for grants that we've received through the Department of State, um, transportation enhancement program, and reconstruction projects throughout the city, and then also uh, looking at land use and sustainability and taking a more smart growth approach to development within the city. The mayor, as part of his Partnership for Change initiative, um, created the, sustainable, the Commission on Sustainable Development and Smart Growth, and one of the things we looked at um, were ways to make the, as the name implies, the city more sustainable and embracing the smart growth practices. So we looked at alternative transportation, we looked at the possibility of using smart code to kind of change the perspective of how property and land is developed within the city. So what, what are some of the ideas you've come up with that can make it easier to be a pedestrian in the city? Um, we've been very active in the river trails of we've talked about, uh, just looking at ways and also ways to get people 
out and more active to be the, have them more engaged in the community and you know, the physical benefits of being out and being active. So doing programming along the river trails, uh, we have river crawls uh, throughout the summer months with a variety of topics including photography. We had a canine crawl which was very well attended, um, we have historic crawls and it just gets people out here and gets them involved in the community, gets them knowing what amenities the city has and a lot of people aren't even aware that they are a river trail so we need to get them more involved and more active and the more they use it they can talk to their friends and get them out and using it as well. Now, uh, how did the, the, the city's role in this fit in with all these other organizations that were involved? Uh, uh, you know, how, how does that sort of coalition and partnership work? In a lot of ways, we're the, the conduit, we're the funding, we're the eligible entity to receive grants, and we reach out, and other uh, partners have reached out to do collaborations so we can get more, more bang for the buck as it is. Um, taking advantage of people's specialties rather than trying to duplicate work, we have people with the, uh, the BMTS, the Binghamton Metropolitan Transportation Study, they have experts, the Department of Transportation has experts, and using their expertise, their professional knowledge to have them involved in the projects to make them a better project, a more usable project. So you're talking about the importance of partnerships in making this all happen. Uh, uh, how have the partnerships changed since you first got started? What's what's been going on with them? Right. Uh, yeah, we've uh, you know, since starting with our initial uh, committee uh, that uh, uh, we had constructed to uh, create our pedestrian bicycle plan. Uh, that was. Uh, uh, started it was multidisciplinary we had representatives from the health department on that we had um, representatives from the environmental c uh, community on there we have an environmental management council with the county that was on there uh, and also people from uh, the general public uh, that were interested in pedestrian and bicycle issues uh, we have a bicycle club uh, that was represented on there as well uh, since then uh, we've had some uh, projects that uh, they've been able to contribute uh, uh, as far as giving their input in an advisory role. Um, and uh, we've also uh, uh, been able to uh, get on uh, to other uh, uh, programs and initiatives, uh, coalitions, uh, uh, through invitation uh, from the, the health uh, department and the, the health sector. Uh, they've asked BMTS to be a part of their uh, different programs where they were looking at ways to uh, make changes and impact the, the built environment, uh, uh, such as building sidewalks, um, uh, building uh, uh, multi-use trails, uh, making sure bike lanes around roadways to enable people to have a more active life, um, to incorporate activity into their daily routine, such as biking to work or to school, walking to work and school, uh, walking for errands, um, making sure that we have that infrastructure there that provides for that opportunity to do, to do biking and walking safely. Um, so we've seen a lot of uh, great success um, uh, with those type of partnerships and coalitions now. Um, we've also been able to um, uh, use each other's strengths uh, uh, for benefits as well. Uh, one thing we need to do and we're, gonna, we're actually working on right now is to uh, look at some educational outreach to uh, uh, work with the uh, different decision makers to educate them on the importance of uh, uh, having pedestrian and bicycle accommodations in our transportation systems and uh, also uh, look educating people uh, just a general population on uh, transportation laws you know, uh, such as uh, like the yield to pedestrian law that we have here yield to pedestrians on the crosswalk in New York uh, it's not really part of our culture thought culture at uh, this point to see compliance with that uh, so we need to do some education of the public on issues like that um, and uh, so, uh, again, just using each other's uh, strengths, uh, our partner's strengths, uh, we try to uh, work together on our complementary goals and, uh, um, and, and uh, share in um, uh, really reaching our objectives uh, efficiently. We're in Binghamton, New York, talking with Kay. What are your experiences like 
with traffic getting around the city? Well, for the most part, it's pretty good. It, um, sometimes we run into problems with uh, drivers who don't observe the, the um, right of way of the pedestrian when they're crossing with the walk light. Uh, I can't see the little white man or whatever it is that's in the walk that tells you that you can walk. I go according to the flow of traffic. When the traffic is going the way I am, then I know it's safe to walk. However, many times, people in the street that where they should be stopped go on through using a right turn on red, or sometimes even if there isn't one, they turn into that lane uh, or, or go across the walk, crosswalk and in front of me and many times uh, I have felt the breeze of their vehicle right in front of me and it really is a very terrifying experience. Um, and then you're, you're out there with a white cane, even with the white cane? Even the, the, with the white cane, I'm using the white cane which is supposed to indicate to drivers that I don't see them. But people apparently just don't uh, realize what the white cane is for, or they don't, don't uh, observe it. They're too busy with other things, you know, in their own lives, I guess, talking on their cell phones or whatever. You know, what, uh, what else do drivers sometimes do that, that can create problems for you? Uh, when they stop their cars, they pull up across the crosswalk. An individual tries to cross the street, whether they're blind or in a wheelchair or whatever, uh, they have to go around that person and risk getting hit by someone else um, in, out in traffic or someplace. And that's not a safe thing. Uh, the crosswalk is for the pedestrian. It is not for the vehicles to pull into. Visit us on the internet at www.pedestrians.org.